Um, so the claim that uh, we, the third minute, are proposing today is that uh, data collection by companies operating online should be prohibited from being distributed to third parties. Um, and to support this, I have three claims. And the first is that companies gather and sell data without our knowledge. Um, the second is that companies with data banks are at risk for breaches and for hacking. And for the third, um, I'm going to talk about how companies often use the information and the data that they, they get to prioritize profit over their customers. Um, so, and then the plan of action is that the federal government should issue a restriction that limits the access of personal information from one business to another. So with uh, the first claim that companies uh, gather and sell data without our knowledge, um, so I have a quote from a, an article by Leo Mirani and Max Neeson, and they say that a new Federal Trade Commission report um, describes an industry that collects data from many sources without consumers knowing, that is multi-layered and intertwined, and that stores billions of data points covering nearly every U.S. consumer. And so these reports looked at nine major data brokers, some which include Axiom, CoreLogic, DataLogix, and e Bureau. Um, so what a lot of these data brokers do is that they basically collect information from three websites, such as like Facebook and Google and, like, and all that kind of stuff. Um, and so what they do is they then kind of compile all these different information based on different, um, I guess, different lists or categories. And so this, this could be stuff like identifying data, demographic data, uh, court and public, record data, even from vehicles and like your neighborhood and like your general interest and all that. And so what they do is they compile all these information and then they then put it into like little packages. And then these companies then sell it to third parties. Um, and so, yeah, okay, so, um, and that mostly happens online, but this can also happen even like outside of like the computer. Um, so I found another quote where um, by Farhad Manju, and he states that Facebook partnered with DataLogix, a firm that records the purchasing patterns of more than 100 million American households. And so what they do is when you stop by a supermarket, and you know if you buy you know whatever groceries that you need, there's a good chance that you'll use a loyalty card or like a discount card, right? And so what that happens is that the card that that is then tied to the identity of your purchases is then um, the data of that is then sent over to servers that is maintained by data logic. And so what happens is then um, the that data logic then takes all this information and then they like spread it out, you know, to different locations and different companies that need that to try to advertise to you more and more. Um, and so it's one thing for you know social media like Facebook and Google to do this, and it's another thing when it involves things like healthcare. Um, and so Okay, so there's an article by Evan Salinger called Does the Health Data Industry Prioritize Profits to Patients? And so the quote from here is that it says that we would like doctors to get information about us when they need it because that's evident that they need these things to kind of figure out, you know, what, it, what you know, sort of diseases or things that we might have and how to um, try to help us with that. Um, and so things that happened years ago can illuminate what's happening to us right now. And yet patients don't have a lot of easy access to their complete records and lots of medical systems can't communicate with each other. At the same time, companies who are not invested in our well-being are successfully learning quite a lot about us. So companies that aren't even attributed with you know, healthcare, they're getting all this information when they shouldn't be. Um, and then the second claim is that companies or data banks are at risk for breaches and hackers. And so, um, So one company that I want to focus on is Equifax, and um, basically an article by Jason Sadowski that says why do big hacks happen, blame big data, says that um, the vaults of these data banks are impossible to secure because there is such a plethora of information, and in large part because the wealth of information they hold is a beacon for hackers. Um, so even the most impenetrable cybersecurity will eventually fail under the pressure of dogged hackers probing for weaknesses to exploit. 
So better cybersecurity is important, but it's not a solution. It only postpones failure. Um, and so things like that. So they have then access to a lot of information. Um, you know, and this, okay, so there's another article. Sorry, I'm jumping ahead. Um, it says, this breach is a monumental failure of cybersecurity, which raises many pressing privacy concerns. And so these issues um, illustrate a fundamental problem with the data economy, which is that data banks like Equifax are too big. So because they're having such a plethora of information just constantly coming in, you know, it's such a problem because then like hackers and other companies are, are gonna try to take this information without their knowledge. Um, and then the third claim that I'm going to talk about is that companies often use the information, oh no, sorry, I'm gonna go back to claim number two. Um, so there's actually a article um, by Matt Honan, and he talks about how um, his accounts, um, so how basically a bunch of hackers were able to get into his account because all of his accounts from Amazon to Apple ID were daisy chain, which is basically that they're all connected to each other. Um, and again, this kind of, um, so there's a, there's a quote here that says, the very four digits that Amazon considers unimportant to display in the clear on the web are precisely the same ones that Apple considers secure enough to perform identity verification. So it shows that there is such a lack of security in some parts, and in the other ones, you know, um, that, that's all that's required for like, people to be able to access information that's sensitive. And then the third um, claim is that companies often use information to prioritize profit over customers' privacy. Um, and I have a quote here from Sam Thielman who says that data miners and brokers often don't want to talk about it because it's a multi-billion dollar trade and they say there's a great chance to advance medical science. But what they don't talk about, the real reason, which is marketing and sales. 